and welcome to Enter the Glory Zone with me, Dr. Edith Davis, on 94.1 FM, Wave 94. Spiritual believers and listeners, as you know, God has given me, commissioned me to basically give the golden nuggets, the golden words of knowledge about how to divorce-proof your marriage. And I want to share, most recently, a deep revelation that not only applies to marriages, but it applies to everyone on planet Earth. And I want to share that revelation with you now. A few years ago, Daddy God, you have I, Lord God, Christ Jesus, Yahshua Mashiach, and Lord God, Ruha HaKadosh, Lord God, Holy Spirit, gave me a song, a song about the blood of Jesus. And I now added, I added that to my worship. I have a, I worship the Lord in the mornings, I begin my day with Him, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and I sing songs to Him. One of them is this new song that they've given me about the blood of Jesus. And as I was singing this song, the Holy Spirit opened up my mind and gave me a deep, deep, deep revelation about the blood. He took me all the way back to Cain and Abel. And those of you who don't know the story, Cain and Abel, um, uh, they may have been twins, I think. Um, but Cain and Abel, one was over the land and one was over the sheep. And the um, they had been taught by their father, and who had been taught by God the Father, Adam had been taught by God the Father, about the sacrifice and what are the requirements. And, of course, it has to be the first. It has to be the first. And it's, and God is looking for blood, really. When you think about the blood in the physical realm, the blood is probably the closest thing to the life force that's represented in the spirit realm. So in the physical realm, the blood is the closest thing to a life force that we see in the Spiritual realm, right? And I think in the soul realm, I guess the, the closest thing to the blood would be your emotions, right? So, at least that's my thought. So, God started opening me up and he showed me how, you know, God was pleased with Abel's offerings. and But God was not pleased with Cain's offering because Cain did not follow the protocol. It was not the first. It was um, Abel gave the f- the first baby lamb, the fat of the lamb, all of that he put on the altar to the Lord. And Cain did something else. Uh, one of the key things was it was not the first. He gave the grain of his land, and it wasn't the first. God likes to be first. So, He was not pleased with Cain's offering. And God even spoke to Cain and said, you know, it will be well why your expression, your disposition, why is it so downcast? He said, do right and won't it be well with you? Sin is crouching at the door. But like always, um, humans, he was angry with his brother Abel, jealous of his brother Abel, because his offering was accepted by God instead of him making corrections in himself. So he took his anger out on his brother and killed him and tried to hide it. And of course, the blood of Abel cried out to the father and God approached Cain and said, your brother Abel's blood cries out to me. What have you done? So anyway, A very sad day for Cain and Abel. Abel went on to be with the Lord and in heaven. And the long and short of everything, God started showing me the significance of the blood and then the revelation. Here we go. So Jesus, the final Adam, 
the final, the, the son of the father that has the blood of the father. Father is his, was his, uh, his father, right? The holy father. And his, the blood in his veins was the father's blood because the blood is determined by the father. So not the mother. And so they have the big, I mean, Satan is looking everywhere for the, he knows that the son of God is coming. He's been on the lookout for him. He killed all the babies in Bethlehem. He went through all the kings and had some horrendous things done to those kids because he, he knew it was coming through the kingly line of David. And uh, so there's some horrific things. Grandparents slaughtered almost everybody in the household. It was awful. Some of the things that were done to those children. And we finally get to Jesus being born from Joseph. Well, Joseph was his stepfather and Mary was his mother. She carried him in her womb. So she provided the egg and the Holy Spirit provided the sperm, right? So Jesus, the word of God is made flesh and, and lives among us. The word of God was placed in the womb of Mary. The word of God had the blood of heaven, the blood of the heavenly father, very precious blood. So Satan's looking and looking, and finally God says, okay, I'm ready to reveal my son to you. He's 30 years old, gets baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist, and the heavens break open. The Father speaks, the Holy Spirit, like a dove, comes down and rests upon Jesus, and God the Father pronounces, announces to all the spiritual realms, including Satan and all his demons, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And then it's on, on like neck bones. It's on. The spirit immediately says, okay, go ahead. Takes him into the wilderness to be tested by Satan. He passed with flying colors. Then he has in the middle where he's in the garden where he's has to submit his will to the will of the Father, because he really didn't want to be separated from the Father, which is what was going to happen once he took upon himself the sins of the world, which is what he was sent to do. And so, he, he this is when the blood starts really hitting the earth. The blood is sweat, and mixed with drops of blood, hit the ground. Jesus surrenders his will. He submits to the will of the Father. And then he goes through the passion, goes through the beating, the, the spitting, the, the flogging, the plucking of his beard, the crown of thorns, the, 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 um, whipping with the cat of nine tails, which literally tore the skin off his back. And in some cases took people's eyes out and their ears. When he got done, he was just a lump of flesh and blood was everywhere. The blood, the blood. But he was still alive as he carried the cross, as he carried the cross to Calvary, to Golgotha, and he submitted. He got on the cross as they crucified him, nailed his wrists to the cross, and then nailed his, put a nail through his two feet and put him on the cross for the most excruciating, horrific death. And he was naked. So that was very shameful. So he's naked on the cross, and he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He surrenders, he makes, he gives his mother to John. He says, woman, this is your son, John, John, this is your mother. He takes care of business, and then he says, it is finished. Even the son was covered for those three hours that he went through the excruciating pain of the crucifixion. He gave up his spirit to the Father, and the enemy, Satan, gleefully, the demons gleefully took his soul, His took him down to the pit of hell, to the very, very depths of hell, and something happened. Something happened that Saturday. Something happened, a light that darkness had never seen light like that ever. It was the light of the Holy Spirit. It was the light of Christ Jesus. It was the light of the Father. And basically, Jesus took captivity captive. 
He saved, he went and ministered to the people in Abraham's bosom, Abraham and David and all the saints, all the people that had died prior to his crucifixion, and asked them, did they accept him as their Lord and Savior? And they all agreed and they all went to heaven, paradise, right? Along with the one thief on the cross, right? So what happened? We There was an agreement. There was a contract where death and hell, death had an agreement. Death could not take anyone into its bosom unless they had sinned. Death and hell could not accept any person who was righteous. Whoops. There it is. Here's the revelation. Jesus never sinned. He took on the sins of the world, but he himself had never sinned. Therefore, he was righteous. And guess what? Just like Abel's blood cried out to the father, but because of the injustice that Cain had done, Jesus' blood cried out to the father. And the father said, you have illegally taken my son to death, has taken him and put him in hell. Game over. Jesus took captivity captive. Jesus took the keys of hell and death. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Only through him to the Father. So all of us who accept Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, accept his blood for the forgiveness of our sins, become the righteousness of God in and through Christ Jesus and has a pathway into heaven into eternity with the Father, eternity with the Son, eternity with the Holy Spirit. It was the blood. It was the blood of Christ Jesus, His holy blood that He shed that cried out just like Abel's blood cried out for justice. Jesus' blood cried out to the Father for justice. The Holy Spirit quickened Him. And resurrected him. And on the third day, he came back to the physical realm. The stone was rolled away. Spent 40 days with his disciples. And and then he ascended into heaven and presently sits at the right hand of the Father. And we do too. Those of us who have accepted Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we sit in heavenly places in the spirit realm. Our spirits sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And the Father said, You, Son, your name, there'll be nothing higher than your name. Everything bows its knee to the name of Christ Jesus. Everything. And he said, You sit here while I make your enemies your footstool. Because in the ancient days, in the ancient days, when a king defeated another king, that king, first of all, his um, robe was taken from him and sewed onto the robe of the reigning king. So when people see Jesus in the throne room, his his robe it covers the whole throne room. So and also the king that was defeated is brought before the other king and placed on on the on his knees and the the king puts his feet on the back of the defeated king. Yes. So God the Father says, I'm going to make all your enemies your footstool and the last enemy to be defeated and will be put under Jesus' feet by the Father, put under Jesus' feet by the Father, will be death itself. Death itself. Because of the blood of because of the holy blood of Christ Jesus. So, as we divorce proof our marriage, we realize not only this, is that if we come in alignment and we marry someone who is equally yoked, meaning they're believers, then the first step is that our spirits are one. Jesus is the perfect representation of, 100% perfect representation of the Father. And the Holy Spirit is the perfect representation, 
100% representation of Christ Jesus. And when we become born again, our spirit becomes a new creation in Christ Jesus. And our spirit is 100% 100 a perfect representation of the Lord God Holy Spirit. And therefore, the Lord God Christ Jesus. And therefore, the Father. We are one. We are holy. Lately, God has been talking to me about holiness, and I'm getting a deeper revelation of that as well. And the first thing people learn about holiness is to be separate, to be separated, to be separate from others or things. Holiness. Another thing God taught me about holiness is God the Father, of course, is holy, holy, holy. And what that means is, is that everything is uni unified. Everything is one. Everything is one. The Father is one with the Son. The Word, the Word is one with the Father. The Word is also one with the Lord God, Holy Spirit. They are in one accord. They are unified as one. That is holy. So, holiness for us, those of us who accept Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior, those of us who accept the blood of Christ Jesus, basically have, ooh, it's just, we have unified, our spirit is unified with the Holy Spirit, unified with Christ Jesus, unified with Lord God, um, the Father, right? And as we work out our salvation, as we meditate on the Word and come in agreement with the Word of God for our lives, we trust in the Lord with all our heart. We do not rely on our own insight. In all our ways, we acknowledge Him and He will make straight our path in unifying, becoming one, becoming holy with the Spirit. Then our minds become the mind of Christ. Our will become the will of the Father, the will of Christ Jesus, the will of the Lord God, Holy Spirit. And our emotions become bathed in the blood of Christ Jesus. And we love the things that God loves. And we hate the things that the Lord hates. So our soul becomes one. And then our body becomes one. Our body Manifest our body carries out the word. We don't fornicate. We don't have sex before marriage. We we don't um, lie or steal or cheat. We don't um, treat people badly. We love people as God loves people, and we and we need to uproot or have the Holy Spirit uproot all roots of bitterness, which are. Planted in us from the harm and the hurt that people have done to us. I, I recognize a root of bitterness in me just re recently, and I said, God, I want it out. You know, I want it out. I don't want any roots of bitterness because the root of bitterness will defile everything. You can always tell somebody with a root of bitterness when they start talking, you know, about certain subjects. You can see the root of bitterness. So, holiness has uh, been on my mind as of late. What does that really mean? Uh, I had a, my foundation is a Catholic. I was raised um, as a Catholic, and now I'm non denominational. But one of the things was I got to listen to Mother Angelica the other day. She's the one that's. Uh, God used to create the Catholic television station. Uh, she's gone on to be with the Lord now, but she said something that was really profound about holiness. And she said, holiness is pretty simple. All you have to do to be holy is to do the will of the Lord God, Holy Spirit, exactly at that moment. Whatever the Holy Spirit has you doing at that moment, that's holy. And she brought up the example of St. Francis of Assisi, um, who 
came from a pretty affluent, wealthy Italian family and renounced everything for Jesus and including stripping himself of all those, the clothing and everything of Jesus, for Jesus, right? And he went on to, to start uh, the Franciscan monks, and uh, which really um, helped. Uh, the Catholic Church give back to the foundation, which is a, it's all about Jesus the Christ. It's all about well, the kingdom, the kingdom of God. And one of the interesting things that people, um, well, you know, he had a way with animals and plants and, you know, just he, he walked in holiness um, like Brother Lawrence. And so basically, it's not about how much the Holy Spirit is in you. It's how much you let the Holy Spirit have you, have you. How much do you open up yourself? Do you do you give to the Holy Spirit? There's you know that's how much the Holy Spirit can use you. So Saint Francis gave it all, gave it all to the point that he actually um, had the wounds of Christ, and a few saints have received. The wounds of Christ, the uh, the wounds in their feet and the wounds in their wrists. Uh, and one of the incidences was St. Francis was uh, praying. And there were a bunch of birds out there chirping away. It was early in the morning. They were in the trees just chirping, chirping, chirping. And he said, St. Francis, hey, hey, you, you guys. I need to pray. You're, you're a distraction. You need to be quiet until I finish praying. And immediately all the birds stopped chirping. They fluttered down to the ground. And they bowed their head as St. Francis prayed. Another incident was there was a wolf. And this wolf was pretty bad. It had hurt and probably had killed some people too. The people would, as they would travel um, back and forth through the woods, the wolf would attack them. And the people went to St. Francis about this and bring St. Francis, I'll take care of it. And St. Francis went out into the woods where the wolf was and the wolf started growling and he said, peace be still, my brother. And the wolf bowed down because St. Francis had totally sold out to Christ Jesus, had totally sold out to the Holy Spirit and the Father. He had given his all, so he walked in holiness. He was one with the Holy Spirit. He was one with Christ Jesus. He was one with the Father. So he had the authority and power to control the wolf. And the wolf bowed and he said, you've been a bad, bad. You've been very bad. Now, I want you to stop attacking the villagers. And they're going to feed you. And so no more attacking the villagers and you shall be fed. And br the brother he called Brother Wolf. And the wolf lived a long time and he stopped attacking the villagers and the people fed him. So that is holiness. That is the power of God. So how do we take these two profound lessons about the blood and about holiness and take it into our marriage and help make it divorce proof. Well, if we, husband and wife, are in alignment with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, then the wife is going to love her husband uh, and with the love of Christ Jesus and the husband is going to love his wife with the love of Christ Jesus. And that love is going to spill over to their children and to their uh, family members and into the community. So that love is profound and it's, it's a love that will divorce proof your marriage. Why? Because you recognize the blood washes away all your sins, past, present and future sins for you and your spouse. So you have a clean slate and also Holiness, you become separate unto the Father, you become unified, one with the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and you love your spouse, and you think the best of your spouse, and you walk in holiness, oneness with your spouse. So, 
It is a wonderful revelation. Um, if anyone wants more, a deeper or more extensive teaching on this, please feel free to reach out to me. My telephone number is 816-678-6838. And also, um, I, I welcome opportunities to go and teach and speak um, all over the world. And so if you want to learn more about that revelation, please feel free to reach out to me. You can also reach out to 94.1 FM, Wave 94. Doug Apple is um, the station manager and my godfather, and he can also reach me. So think, think about the blood today. Think about how awesome it is that God gave every drop of his blood for us, for you and for me. Think about the holiness, that we are indeed holy. Our spirit is holy. And now we need to have that worked out, that salvation worked out through our souls, our activity of our minds, the activity of our will, and the activity of our emotions, and our bodies, our flesh, our muscles, our bones, and our blood. Yes, Satan wished he had never crucified the Christ. If he had known, if he had known that he was setting himself up, the blood, the blood of Jesus testified against him. The blood of Jesus cried out to justice to the Father. And the Father responded by raising him from the dead and sitting him at his right hand and making every enemy of his his footstool. And the great, great thing about Christ Jesus also is that we are his bride, the church. We are his bride and he loves us and we will, we will become transformed. We will become one. We will become holy. We will become unified in him. Unity is coming to the body of Christ and we will be holy, separate, unified with the Holy Spirit unified with Christ Jesus and the Father and we will do great exploits for the kingdom of God thank you once again for joining me on Wave 94 94.1 FM and I want to close it out with Romans 10 9 that is if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead you will be saved Thank you once again for joining me on Enter the the Glory Zone with Dr. Edith Davis on 94.1 FM, Wave 94. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord.